Today, I'm joined by Takahiko Nakao, chairman of the Mizuho Research Institute and former Japanese vice finance minister for international affairs. Bruce Legal has also joined us. He is former macro fund manager at Millennium Management, former managing director at Lockheed Martin Investment Management, and author of Global Macro Playbook. Bruce Nakao-san, thank you so much for being here. We're talking about Japan and currency intervention. Nakao-san, I want to start with you here. Last year, the Japanese government carried out a currency intervention to support the yen. The yen is now falling towards the intervention level again. How low do you think the government will allow the yen to fall before intervening in the currency market? Thank you for that question. It's very difficult to tell what is the exact point of starting thinking about the intervention. But obviously, this level of yen... 148 to 150, it looks uh, excessive, uh, the yen depreciation. And uh, if you look at the big market index, uh, Japanese yen is uh, regarded 43% lower than the purchasing parity level. So it is like a eight, 70s or 80. So it is obviously excessive yen depreciation. So even if uh, the speed of uh, depreciation for some months is up to now, was not as speedy as uh, the last time uh, the government intervened. I think uh, there is a chance to intervene again to support you. Bruce, two questions here for you. How do market participants typically react to Forex interventions? And how does this tend to impact trading strategies and overall market sentiment? So the last intervention was almost a year ago in September of 22. You know, prior to that, the Bank of Japan had not intervened for almost 11 years. So the market's gotten kind of rusty in how to handle interventions. But typically, you know, on the day that the intervention would occur, the market will typically go with uh, what's going on. They won't fight uh, whoever the central bank is that's intervening. They'll typically try to uh, either front run them or follow up behind with the additional buying or additional selling, depending on which way they're going. Those days tend to be very volatile. Sometimes they do... They do uh, turn the markets. The last year's intervention, the yen stabilized for a couple of days, and then it immediately started working its way back up and it approached the you know the high 140s level. And now we're approaching those same levels again. We're approaching 150. I think now the market's probably thinking about intervention a little bit differently. If I was going to do it, I would probably look at yield curve control along with intervention at the same time. I think uh, the yield curve is going to actually drive the market more than intervention. And I think once the Bank of Japan changes their yield control or changes their uh, monetary policy, that will change the whole outlook for the yen, more more so than intervention, I think, this time. So, of course, uh, it's uh, more important to adjust uh, monetary policy or to change uh, monetary policies, including uh, yield curve control or the policy interest rate of a short term. So I think it has a more impact on the currency. But the BOJ has a very strong feeling about the mandate of a price. It is a 2% inflation target. So they may take more time to consider whether they already reached a 2% inflation target in fundamental ways. But because of their policies, their idea about the very stringent uh, take of um, the, the mandate, uh, they don't pay enough attention to exchange rate. By the way, exchange rate is not, uh, intervention is by the uh, Ministry of Finance and uh, Foreign Reserve, which was held by the government, and uh, the Central Bank, uh, BOJ, just uh, uh, execute uh, the intervention. So, of course, uh, the uh, monetary policy uh, may have a more impact, and I hope that uh, they will be adjusted, but uh, because uh, they have a more reserved uh, more prudent approach about uh, the prices, and uh, they regard mandate of uh, the prices uh, very important, and uh, they don't necessarily pay uh, sufficient attention to each rate. Uh, if a yen is too weak, it means the prices can go up uh, further, and uh, it is uh, to the very difficult moment for the consumers, although some exporting uh, and resource companies uh, gain because of uh, yen's depreciation. But overall, and also stock prices can go up because uh, those are uh, often very big companies to make a a Nikkei uh, index. So uh, it looks nice for companies, but for consumers, it's not good. So I think uh, yen should be, uh, yen depreciation should be stemmed. And if a monetary policy doesn't uh, come in, I think uh, intervention should be needed and it has a certain impact. So, Nakao-san, correct me if I'm wrong, then, you do not think that the current exchange rate 
is where it should be right now, given where the Japanese economy is. Is that right? Am I understanding yeah, that correct? Yes, 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 that's right. So if uh, we look at the, once again, uh, purchasing power parity, the Japanese prices are very weak, uh, very low in dollar terms because of yen depreciation. So mm -hmm. Japan becomes very poor <laughs> and uh, Japanese wages, Japanese real estate and companies, I mean, stocks and so on. Those are so cheap compared to others. So it is uh, really deviating from uh, the fundamental price level. So I think uh, it should be adjusted. And uh, one of uh, the reasons is a very low, long, uh, excessively uh, easy monetary policy. And if uh, the monetary policy is uh, to get out of deflation in that way, I think uh, there should be intervention. Can you talk a little bit, just a little bit more than, um, and, and Bruce, you can feel free to jump in here too if you'd like, but Nako-san, can you talk a little bit more then about the broader implications for the Japanese economy, what it means for citizens as a whole when the yen is weak as it is right now? Yeah, as I said, uh, the prices of uh, food and uh, the energy and so on are becoming higher. People really feel it. And uh, every time they go to the supermarket, uh, rent juice and everything is now much higher in level. So even compared to the headline CPI index, uh, people may feel that uh, they are now really depressed by this uh, price hike. And uh, uh, the government is now trying to subsidize the gasoline price, but uh, in a sense, it is, uh, uh, it is uh, uh, distorting uh, price uh, functions uh, to adjust uh, the demand and supply of energy. So the uh, more, uh, I mean, uh, orthodox way of uh, approaching uh, these kind of things is uh, to have a stronger yen. But uh, some people really feel that uh, weaker yen or yen's uh, depreciation or uh, uh, easy monetary policy is needed to get out of deflation. But one, one question is whether we are still in deflation or we can become behind the curve regarding the uh, inflation rate. <laughs> I'm sorry, I spoke too much. Yeah. So do you think then that the 150 level is kind of like a line in the sand then for the uh, MOF? Do you think they'll let it go through 150 for more than uh, a few days or a week? Yeah, it's uh, once uh, once again. Usually, the uh, uh, the authorities, uh, uh, including when I was in the authorities, we don't mention what is the level uh, they regard uh, kind of excessive. But uh, this level is already a kind of uh, level which uh, they start thinking uh, uh, the intervention, and they make a kind of uh, the uh, vocal kind of uh, cautions to the market. Uh, uh, regarding the intervention. So this right, is a right. kind of a, a circumstances to start thinking it. Bruce, to what extent is the weak yen contributing to the bull market that we're seeing in the Japanese stock market right now? Well, Takigo kind of mentioned a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. So the weak yen is, is obviously driving the corporate sector and it's making exports quite cheap. The yen is very cheap. It's depreciated. Since 2010, it's depreciated from 70 to, let's say, 140. So it's it's basically half it's lost half its value, right? It's down 100%. And so right now, the yen is very, very correlated with the Nikkei. If the Nikkei is up, the yen is weaker. You know, the question in, in the yen is also quite correlated with the 10-year U.S. Treasury, and it's very correlated with the Chinese yuan. So there's a lot of integrations going on between currencies and different parts of the economic wheel right now. And, and now I touched on a lot of those in my latest piece, Resurgence of Japan, which got published last week. But definitely the weekend is driving the uh, earnings per share, um, just overall corporate earnings in, in Japan right now. And uh, that is, you know, really the, the big change occurred in 2010-11 when the Bank Japan went on. Uh, they, they put a two-prong uh, approach, basically. They started uh, buying equities uh, ETFs and the, and they own over 50% of the equities uh, ETFs in the in uh, the market and at the same time they began devaluing the uh, the currency um so those two approaches have driven the Nikkei up to almost the all-time highs from 1989 and obviously we we touched on the yen already so they're very very correlated are you seeing more yen carry trades right now yeah i mean yen is the carry currency right the Japanese monetary policy right now has the only negative currency, uh, has the only negative interest rates uh, globally that I'm aware of, especially in G10. The, the one year in Japan is still about minus five basis points. The 10 year obviously is about 70. 
Um, and that's that goes into the yield uh, control, uh, the curve control that we talked about earlier. But that is the carry trade. And you can use yen to carry pretty much any currency right now, is uh, uh, whether it's uh, Aussie dollar, whether it's the euro, US dollar, you, you name it in the G10. Um, anything is a, a carry. Same thing on the EM side, uh, Max yen, Brazilian, uh, you know, all those have done very, very well this year against the Japanese currency. I want to switch focus a little bit. Bloomberg reported that the BOJ is purchasing Japanese government bonds or JGBs at a record pace this year. BOJ has been the largest holder of JGBs for some time now, I accounting for, I believe, more than 50% of the bonds outstanding. Uh, so, Nakasan, my first question is to you. Is this problematic from a policy standpoint? Yeah, yes, I think so. So when they started uh, this uh, very uh, uh, extraordinary uh, IZ monetary policies in 2013, it was maybe uh, right to do that, uh, to get out of deflation and to give a, a stimulus to the economy. But the, because uh, they uh, kept uh, this uh, extraordinary uh, easy monetary policy for so long, uh, it causes a lot of uh, kind of side effects, including the loss of the uh, budget discipline and uh, they continue to issue bond to to finance uh, defense and uh, uh, child care and so on so uh, it uh, uh, causes a kind of loss of uh, the uh, discipline in the government and it may cause uh, trouble in the future and also it distorts the yield curve and also the profit of uh, banking sector in japan is uh, depressed because of uh, the margin uh, between the short term and the long term so in a sense, uh, the uh, uh, intermediation by banks is now low, uh, weaker, so it's not really good. So then uh, accelerate uh, depreciation. All these effect, uh, side effect uh, is uh, causing, uh, I would say, bigger trouble in uh, these years uh, compared to uh, before. So I think this is a problem in policy. And also, again, uh, the uh, it is nice to have uh, uh, the higher stock prices. So for foreigners and for wealthy people, it can ha have a certain positive effect. But for most of consumers, it is negative. And this is a kind of distributional issue, not just a kind of macroeconomic issues, but this is distributional issues. And uh, generally, consumers are suffering. And Nakasan, just sticking with you for one more moment here, if interest rates normalize, what will this mean for the debt service of the government? And what could it mean for the JGBs held by the BOJ? Uh, would it lead yeah, so, to mark-to-market losses? So once uh, this kind of uh, the massive uh, accu uh, accumulations of uh, debt happens, it's very difficult to how to uh, move away from this kind of situations. And of course, if uh, the interest rate uh, starts rising, uh, it uh, means that uh, there is a, a larger, much larger debt service uh, cost for the government. So uh, they must face this. But anyway, we cannot continue to this to do this forever. So we cannot just postpone that kind of adjustment forever. So we need to carefully normalize the interest rate and uh, the government uh, should have a uh, effort to raise revenues and also the uh, save uh, uh, the expenditures. Bruce, it seems like there are no natural buyers of JGBs at those yields. How do investors look at this? So if you, if, if you go back to the original conversation about FX carry, if you're going to use a if you're going to use the low yielding currency as a carry strategy, very unlikely would you be looking to invest in that in a bond in that country. You wouldn't want to be short the currency and be along the bond, especially especially at, at these rates. And so, like you said, there's there's really no natural buyer. You know, the activity in JGBs is picking up because it, people expect, or the market traders uh, uh, traders in the market are expecting that eventually this one percent cap is going to break. And so you're starting to get positioning uh, for that for that move. I will say this, you know, the JGBs have been called the widowmaker for a reason. And uh, it's been very difficult to fade the BOJ for the last 15 to 20 years. It's not been a successful trade. I don't know how it's going to work the rest of this year. I think next year, though, especially if the currency continues to devalue, I think you start running some risk there that inflation really starts increasing much more dramatically than what we've seen so far. 
And I think that's that's a risk that uh, we, we spoke on earlier. I do believe that the JGBs will come back into be a, a pretty interesting market to trade next year in 2024. But I think for the rest of this year, I would probably just keep it on the side. I think the Bank of Japan is going to be very patient in, in how they deal. And same thing with the MOF for the rest of the rest of this year. Um, so I think uh, next year it be, is the opportunity to really start getting more active. I will say this, you know, I touched on a lot of this in my paper, the uh, the carry and the conundrum a few months ago. And this is just one more aspect of the carry unwind. And, you know, we've seen the carry unwind developing in the U.S. And, and now we're starting to see a lot of problems start surfacing because of higher interest rates. There's a lot of embedded investments, whether it's on the personal level, corporate level or speculative level, private equity, venture capital. And that these same issues are going to come to float in Japan over the next year to two years. I think that'll be the interesting thing to see how that starts working its way into the system next year. So that's why uh, JGBs could be much more interesting play starting next year. Uh, we're starting to see that play 10 year and the 30 year in the U.S. now where, where the long duration players are getting squeezed out. And we're seeing the long end of the bond market really accelerate to the downside now, meaning yields going a lot higher. And uh, I think we're just in that first part of that acceleration phase. And we could see the U.S. Uh, 10 year uh, in the in the 30 year approach, 5 percent, I think, over the next three to four weeks. And that will also have an impact on the yen and also an impact on the JGBs over the course as we head into next year, since they since the yen is really highly correlated to the 10 year rate. So that's something to watch is if that correlation breaks down over the rest of this year. Bruce, you're already touching on this, but Nakasan, what are some of the key, you know, macroeconomic indicators that you're going to be monitoring as you continue to follow this? Yeah, of course, uh, real uh, GDP growth is important, and also inflation is important. Exchange rate is important, but uh, about the Japanese economy, I think uh, there are many chances. Uh, one chance is that the foreigners, uh, investors, are more interested in the Japanese market because of uh, the relative uh, strength of the economy at this point, and also uh, cheap yen, although it's not good for consumers of Japan, it's good for foreigners. So they are really uh, uh, seriously looking at uh, these opportunities. And also the Japanese economy, Japanese society is much more stable than others. And especially when there is a concern about the management of economy or political situations in China, they now look at uh, Japan once again as a chance uh, for investment. And also Japanese companies more active for raising uh, their wages. Uh, they held uh, more cash uh, before to prepare for the another shock, but uh, they now spend money, more money for wages and ROD and so on. And the government is supporting that kind of movement. Uh, the government is also supporting investment in stocks and others instead of just saving. So I think uh, there is a chance because uh, Japan has a lot of seeds. There are many good things, uh, uh, including uh, the uh, strawberry, the trains, and so on. So there are many things uh, foreigners appreciate, and uh, which is not really priced uh, appropriately. Uh, the uh, Japanese economy, Japanese product service can get more from uh, the uh, uh, quality uh, quality level. So I think there are many chances and uh, I don't like uh, cheap yen, but it is also provides a certain opportunity to foreigners and investors. Bruce Legal, Takahiko Nakao, thank you both so much. Thank you.